where Xenia and Oleg, four-time U.S. national competitors whose goal is to make Team USA and represent the U.S. at international competitions. We'll share with you what we learned along the way, so let's make this journey together! The Gateway Arch is a 630-foot or 192-meter monument in St. Louis in the U.S. state of Missouri. The arch sits at the site of St. Louis's founding on the west bank of the Mississippi River. Clad in stainless steel and built in the form of an inverted, weighted, cantonary arch, it is the world's tallest arch, the tallest man-made monument in the Western Hemisphere, and Missouri's tallest accessible building. The tram capsule takes you to the observation platform at the top of the arch, from where St. Louis spreads out like a blanket. Built as a monument to the westward expansion of the United States, it is a centerpiece of the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial and has become an internationally famous symbol of St. Louis. Inside the visitor center you can learn the history of the arch, as well as try on Park Service uniforms. Hi everyone! We're here in St. Louis at the Gateway Arch, and today we're going to be showing you a new skating video. What are we showing them today, Xenia? We will show you how to do a canasta tango. Alright, let's do it! When explaining tracking, one example sometimes used is pants pockets. When you are in the reverse Killian hold, one partner stands in front of the other partner's pant pocket. When you stroke to the left in the reverse Killian hold, the lady is behind the man's back pocket. When you stroke to the right, the lady is in front of the man's front pocket. When skating on a lobe in the reverse Killian hold on outside edges, the partner on the outside of the lobe should be in the front pocket of the partner that is on the inside of the lobe. When doing the swing roll, on the second half of the swing, the tracking changes. The partner on the outside switches from being in the front pocket to being in the back pocket. While both partners are responsible for tracking, the man is expected to lead the dance and ice dancing. Avoid forming a large gap between partners. Maintain a strong hold and skate through your hips. Finish your extensions. Hold your free foot to a point for the full duration of the required beats. Bring your free foot in on the AND count. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. The AND count is the time in between beats. When you chasse, make sure you bring your feet together. Don't step in front. Turn out your toes by turning your free foot out from your hip. Keep the toes pointed even as you bring the free foot in. Don't walk the progressives. Skate them by pressing your knees and ankles and push. Don't lock the knees. Skate through your hips. Don't skate through your shoulders. When doing the swing rolls, don't raise your free foot too high. Instead hit a point and hold it there. Don't let your upper body rock back and forth. It should be as still as if you're sitting at a table. Skate on strong edges and lobes. Don't flatten or hook them. If you overskate a lobe, you will mess up your next lobe. Maintain soft action in the knees and ankles. One of the best ways to soften your knee and ankle action is by doing chasses. Keep your chest up and open, extend your neck, press your shoulders down. A common mistake is to not press enough into your ankles. In the Killian hold, there should be a straight line running from the lady's left elbow through her torso, through the man's torso to his right elbow. There are two common approaches to understanding and applying corrections. 
One is to skate by correction, the other is to skate by feel. If when skating you're running a mental list of things you need to be doing such as press and bend before each push, turn the toe of the free foot out, etc., then you're skating by correction. If on the other hand you skate by your awareness of what your body is doing, then you're skating by feel. For example, if you did a chasse and your thought was, I fell into that step, I didn't pre-bend, or you did a stroke and your thought was, my turnout was insufficient, then you're skating by feel. It's important to know what mistakes can happen in a given exercise, and what you need to do to do it correctly. Don't be a blank slate every time you come to practice and not know your corrections. That's why in our videos we try to cover common mistakes and necessary corrections. However, if you want to actually skate versus string together a number of steps, you need to learn to skate by feel. The problem is that one can't be running a mental list of corrections without it impacting the presentation. Another mistake to avoid is overanalyzing. If you're peppering your coach with questions, you're probably overanalyzing. You will learn faster by doing an exercise than by trying to understand it by looking or asking. This is mostly a problem for skaters who started as teens or later. Children don't have the analytical capacity of teens or adults, so rely mostly on feel. This enables them to learn faster and retain corrections better. By learning by feel, you will also learn faster and retain corrections better. In order to skate by feel, you have to develop your body awareness, to feel what your body is doing when skating, and memorize what doing something correctly feels like. When your coach says, that was good, don't be like, thanks, and forget what you did by tomorrow. Instead be like, coach liked what I did, I need to remember what doing it right physically feels like. While our videos break things down into small details, that's not really the best way to train. Skating has an emergent quality, and when done right, the whole will be greater than the sum of the parts. You can't really think of skating as simply the addition of many discrete elements. It would be like trying to describe water, but only describing the atoms constituting it. The corrections as described in our videos are based on corrections given to us by our coaches, filtered through and altered by our personal experience. You will also filter corrections through your personal experience, and this will affect how you approach and understand the corrections. Knowledge transfer between individuals is rarely if ever 100% efficient. Like a game of broken telephone, some of the information will be lost or altered. Some ideas will be misunderstood, others de-emphasized. So develop your ability to skate by feel, even if you're not thinking, I don't really feel the differences. With consistent practice, you can and will develop your body awareness and feeling. As always, keep a strong hold, skate on deep edges and make deep lobes. Don't tense up your upper body. Press and bend the knee and ankle of the skating foot before you stroke onto the free foot. Keep your body weight over your skating foot, this will increase your strength of push. Turn out your free foot so the toe doesn't point down, don't toe push. Keep your shoulder blades down and back and extend your neck, but don't be stiff. Skate through your hips. Work on your basics a lot. Crossovers, edges, and turns are the core of your skating ability. And finally, don't look down. The ice isn't going anywhere. One of the difficulties in making these corrections while skating is having to correct multiple things simultaneously. But if you apply yourself, practice consistently, push your limits, resist fear and self-doubt, and work hard, your skating will improve significantly. Hey guys, we really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button and click on the subscribe to subscribe for more videos. Alright, see you next time.